Welcome to the Chicago Bar Association's Justice in Law Weekly. I'm Anita Alvarez, President of the Chicago Bar Association, and I'm delighted to welcome James F. Holderman, Chief Judge for the United States District Court of the Northern District of Illinois. Chief Judge Holderman was nominated to the bench by Ronald Reagan in 1985. He oversees a budget of $27 million and a staff numbering over 450 people. During this show, we will be discussing aspects of the federal district court. Welcome, Judge Holderman. Thank you, Anita. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thanks for joining me here today. And before we start talking about your role in the federal district court, All right. um, can you give us a little more about your background and where you grew up? Yeah, I grew up uh, in Morris, Illinois, uh, which is uh, the county seat of the, the smallest county in the northern district of Illinois, Grundy County. I actually grew up on a farm on the south uh, uh, part of uh, Grundy County, south of the Illinois River. So a farming community. Yes. And did you know as a kid that you wanted to go to law school? Well, there was a point in time, I guess, uh, uh, like every uh, young person, I was watching Perry Mason, and I thought that looked pretty exciting, a lot more exciting than uh, uh, picking corn. Uh, and so uh, at some point in time in, in my uh, youth, I did start to think about it. So uh, where did you go to law school? The University of Illinois in, uh, in Champaign. And then once you graduated, what was your career? I uh, clerked for a federal district judge uh, for a year uh, and then uh, became an assistant United States attorney here in Chicago. And how long did you do that? I was there for uh, six years and then uh, went on and uh, became a partner at the law firm of Sun and Shine, Nath and Rosenthal. And what type of law did you practice there? I practiced federal court uh, litigation exclusively uh, across the country. I, I had cases from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota to Mobile, Alabama, from uh, New York to California. Mm -hmm. So your whole uh, legal career has really been focusing on the federal side, correct? That's correct. And so you, did you practice at all in state court? I had uh, on occasion uh, state court uh, cases, uh, uh, but uh, primarily it was in the federal court system. Okay, so in 1985, you were nominated for the Northern District of Illinois uh, by uh, then President Ronald Reagan. Could yes. you tell us a little bit more about that whole experience and how is it that he even got your name? How did you get to that point? Well, uh, then Senator Charles Percy had recommended my name uh, to the president, but uh, um, you never know until uh, you uh, are actually nominated. And it was uh, uh, Labor Day weekend of 1984. Uh, I uh, had heard that, or I'd been informed that the president uh, might be calling. And so on that Saturday morning of Labor Day weekend, uh, I was uh, actually out uh, coaching my uh, son's youth soccer uh, uh, team, and um, they came to tell me that the White House had called at my home and that I needed to get back home because the White House was going to call back. Uh, we didn't have cell phones then, so uh, <laughs> I, I then uh, rushed home and I, re I remember standing in my, uh, in my kitchen, uh, we had a, a wall phone, looking at the phone, and then realizing that I had actually um, uh, just put on old clothes because I was planning on seal coating my driveway after the <laughs> game, uh, soccer game was over. And I said to myself, you're not properly dressed to talk to the President <laughs> of the United States. Uh, but then the phone rang. And, uh, the White House calling, we hold for the President of the United <laughs> States. And then he came on and he said, uh, Mr. Holderman, Ron Reagan. And I said, Mr. President, and, and he, if you remember, <laughs> Reagan had such a wonderful voice. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, uh, uh, I have uh, some papers in front of me that I would like to sign, but before I do, I want to make sure I have your permission to do so. I'd like to appoint you to be a United States District Judge for the Northern District of Illinois. And I said, Mr. President, I, I'd be honored and privileged to have that opportunity to serve my country in that way. And, and then there was a pause, and, and it was almost like I could hear him mm -hmm. signing the nomination paper. And then I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> and, and so uh, I, I said, how's Nancy? <laughs> and uh, President Reagan then uh, said, uh, uh, she's just fine. And Anita, if you've ever talked to someone on the telephone where you know they're talking to a person in the same mm -hmm. room, uh, when he said, she's just fine, we're here at the Western White House. Uh, we went out for a, a ride earlier this morning, and uh, I will tell her you said hello. <laughs> and I said, if you'd do that, Mr. President, I'd appreciate it. And then he said, well, uh, I, I have a few more phone calls to make, and so I appreciate your taking this uh, position uh, for the United States. 
That's said, wonderful. Thank you. What a wonderful story. So that's how it happened. <laughs> what a wonderful story to take a call from the White House. Uh, that must have been so exciting for you and your family. It really was. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what are the what's the term limits uh, on a federal judge, um, and uh, you know now in the role of chief judge, can you tell us what that entails? Okay. Well, federal judges uh, are Article Three judges, district judges, court of appeals uh, judges, uh, and Supreme Court judges are all appointed for life. Uh, we are uh, each appointed by the President of the United States, confirmed by the Senate, and our term is the rest of our lives. Uh, unless there, there's some impeachment proceeding that has to be brought in the mm -hmm. United States Senate. Uh, as, the, uh, as the chief judge, uh, my term is seven years. Okay. Uh, that's the maximum I can serve. And uh, one becomes chief judge uh, by being the, uh, uh, the senior most uh, uh, tenured uh, district judge <clears throat> who has not yet reached the age of uh, 65. Okay. <coughs> so I'm, uh, I am... Uh, I, I fit that category, and that's how I became the chief judge. Okay, and can you tell us a little more about your duties as, as chief judge? What exactly are you responsible for? Well, you mentioned at the outset that uh, uh, really we have a, a large operation in the federal district court, and I guess you could liken my position to the chief executive officer. Uh, my clerk, Mike Dobbins, uh, is the chief operations officer, and uh, my role is uh, really uh, administrative. I also still hear cases. Uh, I also uh, am the chair of the uh, Court Security Committee, and uh, uh, in the Northern District of Illinois, traditionally the chief judge uh, is in charge of uh, pre-indictment uh, matters that come up where the United States Attorney's Office needs uh, uh, judicial authorization, such as uh, electronic surveillance. That comes to the chief judge. And the Northern District of Illinois, many times, uh, maybe some of our viewers are just thinking about Chicago and the city of Chicago. Yes. But uh, it encompasses a much larger area. Can you tell us exactly what is it does encompass? Yes, it's really uh, the, uh, the 18 northernmost counties of the uh, state of Illinois. It uh, goes all the way out to the Mississippi River, uh, kind of up at the, uh, the north uh, uh, west corner. And uh, in addition to having our headquarters in Chicago, we also have a courthouse and judges in, uh, in Rockford. Okay. It's part of the, that's part of the Western Division of the Northern District of Illinois, and the Chicago area is the Eastern Division. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about the differences between federal court and state court, because right. uh, for our viewers who may not be attorneys and, and, and not uh, really understand um, all of the legal aspects of things, can you explain to us what the difference is between federal court and state court? How do cases end up in federal court as opposed to state court? Well, when the uh, founders of our country uh, established uh, the Constitution, uh, they uh, determined that the federal courts were to be courts of limited jurisdiction and uh, that the state courts were to be courts of general jurisdiction. And so in order to get something in federal court, it has to be uh, based upon a federal law. Uh, it uh, has to be a federal question matter, uh, something involving the United States itself, uh, or there, uh, it can be diversity of citizenship, a suit between uh, two uh, citizens of different states if the uh, monetary uh, amount in dispute is uh, greater than $75,000. But the federal courts hear both civil and criminal cases, That's correct. correct. And the criminal cases um, that are heard in the federal uh, district court are cases that the U.S. attorney brings, correct? Correct. Okay. And then uh, can you tell us a little bit about the number of judges that are there in the federal court? And is it primarily a trial court? Yes. Well, here uh, in the Northern District of Illinois, we have 22 authorized active judgeships. Now, right now, as a matter of fact, we have four vacancies on our court, and we're hoping that uh, the president will be nominating uh, people shortly for those positions. Uh, but uh, we have 18 active judges, uh, uh, district uh, judges. We also have 14 senior judges. We are blessed here in the Northern District of Illinois to have so many uh, judges who, uh, so many senior judges who have agreed to stay on and remain with the court, even though they have reached the age when they could retire if they wanted to. Is that what, the, when I hear people talk about senior status, is that what you're referring to? Yes. And what is that exactly? 